movieweb.com. Now, uh, you've had the opportunity to work on a wide variety of different things from yeah. movies like The Grudge to, you know, Law and Order Criminal Intent, which is one of my favorite shows Ooh. ever. Unfortunately, sadly, just aired its last episode the other yeah. night. Uh, but uh, in, with this movie, you're working with a director who uh, wrote the film. He's shooting you. He's cutting. Your co-star <laughs> also was a writer. They're both producers. What's that experience like versus, uh, I guess, the normal movie-making process that you're used to? Uh, that's a good question. It was, it was terrific. We were able to rehearse uh, and rewrite my scenes with uh, Rhoda for about a week, week and a half in L.A., and we got comfortable with one another, developed a terrific working relationship, and I cannot say enough about their openness and willingness to collaborate. There was no sense of territorialism or holding on to uh, ideas of the way the movie should go. They were willing to experiment and, and make, it, make it work uh, from, from the first day I started. Can you talk to me a little bit about the balance of, of the science fiction and then the sort of human drama? Yeah, that's a good drama. question. Um, the film, one of the, one of the unique aspects to the film, I think, is how well it balances these two genres, these two very different stories. One, a story of atonement between two broken people, and the other is this very far out, high concept idea of another planet. And it's, it's not easy to stitch those two together, uh, not only so that they feel they're part of the same film, but especially so that at the end of the film, they are drawn into a similar orbit, if you will. And it's a testament to what Mike and Britt have done, that it feels natural. Another thing that struck me about the movie is it's very uh, intimate in, in terms of being a character study. Yeah. Um, we spend a lot of time with your character and with Rhoda. Um, what sort of added pressure is there when you're, I mean, you're, it's almost like a play, like you're almost in every frame of the film. Uh, you know, I, I mean, even, even, even in other movies where you have a lead role, it's probably not as demanding in terms of all the screen time. What sort of pressure does that add? How do you deal That's with that? That's a good question. Um, uh, it does add uh, pressure. There is a little bit of, a, uh, of an adjustment sometimes that you might make uh, to a character. Uh, some people make to make the character a little bit more accessible perhaps because if he's going to be the person, the primary channel through which the audience is going to identify with the film. Um, in this case, Rhoda seemed to be that character. Uh, so. There was, a, there was not as much pressure on me. And, but then once you start shooting, generally you kind of have to set that pressure aside because the processor can only handle so many considerations and there's enough to do in the actual acting. Now were you aware uh, when the film was being made, I mean it was a very DIY project and that obviously had a lot of success at Sundance. Um, could you see the finish line in terms of, you know, Fox Searchlight and- Oh my God, you know? no. No, had no idea. Uh, all we knew was that we genuinely, genuinely wanted to make the best film possible. I mean, there was, we didn't know if there was going to be a financial reward, if it would ever make it to theaters, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be on video. I mean, we had very limited resources. And in a way, that worked to the film's benefit because it simplified our goal, which is no worry about status or paying the investors back. Let's just make the best movie possible. And if you lift your head from your task and worry about those things, not only does it distract you, but in my experience, my opinion, you're setting yourself up for disappointment and failure because 95% of the time, that icing never, never happens. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be content with the process with and enjoy the actual making of the movie. And then its reception and, and how, it, how, how wide a distribution receives is, uh, is a bonus. And I would imagine also less support during the process also equates to uh, less cooks in the kitchen in terms of the creative side. That's yeah. true too, that's true too. I can't say enough about the producing team. They, they allowed us to focus on the creative elements and they took care of all the practical and it allowed Britt and Mike and myself to just worry about making the best movie possible and making the content uh, feel real. What are we gonna see you in next? What do you have coming? Uh, another a couple, couple things. Um, I play a lacrosse coach in a film called A Warrior's Heart and I play a police officer in a film about an infamous Canadian bank robber from 19... Uh, 50 Scott Speedman plays. Oh, nice. Yeah. So have you been uh, getting your period research on for that one? Like, uh, studying up? We shot this past uh, um, uh, spring, but yes, I did. I did some of that, and it was fun. I mean, that's one of the fun things about doing uh, period. I'm not much of a clothes horse, but it is yeah. fun to put on um, period clothes. It does help uh, in the creation of the character, make the character come alive to the actor. This is a place that I 